Sorry. How old are you? You're usually on my left hand side. How old are you? <laughs> you can't be losing your mind, right? I hang out with you guys too much. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Is there any public comment? Any select board issues or concerns? Peter. Send this down to Peter. There's signature. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. This, this one. Okay. All right, next up is the consent agenda items. Uh, what is on the consent agenda items are approving the minutes from October 2nd, October 7th, and October 21st, as well as retroactively approving all action that was taken at our last meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the consent agenda as written. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, and the ayes have it. Next item is plan purchases, which we have quotes for backhoe tires. Amazing. And, and what it's very interesting stuff. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think we ought to table this to, for further study. We only have one quote before us, correct? Um, I did a little bit of research and I found uh, Firestone tires that are comparable to the tires that are uh, on this quote for about $2,100 or less. So why don't we just hold off? I don't think there's any killing affair to get another set of tires on these things right off. I'd like to do a little more research on this and maybe come back with a, a better quote. Rest of the board. You want Jason to get some more quotes or do you want to? I, I can do it, but you can get Jason to do it uh, from the same company, Pete's, that he got it from. Uh, this is a company, I believe, in Massachusetts, where they have their main office. Uh, the big quote is uh, $5,824.98 for Nokian Hakapolitas. And uh, I found on their website Firestone tires, Dura, Dura Force, RT tires that are similar uh, for a total of $3,783.02. So that's $2,100 savings right there. I mean, if we don't even have to have a Firestone tire, if we go with a BKT or some other lower price tire, they can still do the same thing. That would be all for that. Plus, we're in the, going to be in a negotiating stage for buying the backhoe outright from the village. So why put all these new tires on it before we do that? Well, the village is going to help pay for the tires right now, right? Well, true, but if they if they work a deal and it uh, increases the value of the tobacco by putting these tires on, then uh, we're going to have to pay more for the tractor, aren't we? I seriously doubt. Well, whatever. Uh, you know, putting that aside, uh, we're not going to waste $2,100. Yeah, I, I think your research is great. Thank you for doing that. This this quote doesn't improve mounting and balance. This is just tires. That's just tires. That's no shipping. That, you've got to add shipping on top of that, it appears. And then you have to have the labor. You have to have the tubes, which have to be added. Tubes are about 100 bucks a piece. 
I don't think it's really a good complete quote anyway. And really, we should have several quotes, not just one. I believe there was another quote asked for. Um, they might have just not gotten back in time. But uh, could you let Jason know the board's looking for some more quotes and clarity if the price includes mountain balance and tubes if driving you down the road? It does not include labor and mountain balance. Um, and I think maybe clarity on the difference, if there's like a. Yeah, if there's a reason why for these tires or, tire or yeah, whatever. Um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah these are what? Uh, I don't even know. And who yeah. would, I mean, if this outfit, does, do they send up a mobile unit or something to, yeah, they, to change them? Or? The problem, they can do the, the town can do the front ones, they can't do the back ones. I guess there's like a cage that goes over it and they inflate it. And we don't have a cage big enough. To well, there's a company in St. Albans that does it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure that the labor has to be done regardless. This is just tires only. And, uh, but that's why the labor's not included. Well, I tried to get over there today uh, to see what the vehicle looked like as far as the condition of the tires, but you know, it's uh, it's an old vehicle. But anyway, it appears as if these uh, Firestones are comparable tires, and we don't need uh, Nokia uh, Cadillac tires on an old vehicle. Hours a year do we put on that vehicle? Is anybody now? I think it was 200 this past year. It's been reduced since we started doing the excavator rental. All right. Yeah. Just I think motivation there's... not to replace because if you're only putting minimal hours. Yeah. Yeah. Put four hours a week on it. We might get another 20 years. Maybe 10 more years on the tires that are on. Hmm. All right. So a little bit more clarity is the sense I'm getting from the board. Not hearing a motion to approve. Okay. Susan. You're okay with following up with Jason on that? Yes. Can you send the tires that you found? Obviously, you can check the tires. These are all right. These are all right. That's what. All right, Rosemary is not here, so we might come back to her report. My guess is she's pretty busy with everything going on tomorrow. Uh, Road foreman report uh, and action items. We all received Jason's report. We discussed those a while back because he's hourly. There's not an excessive need for him to be here on like regular reports. Uh, so recent accomplishments, they have equipment repair and maintenance, grading and degrading roads, split rail fence at Grove Cemetery. Current projects, they're working in the town gravel pit. I'm just reading this out loud for the public. Uh, upcoming tasks, they have fall maintenance, equipment maintenance, uh, two culverts to fix on class four roads. And that is public works report. Yes, does the board have any comments? So they're done ditching? For the summer. For this season, so next spring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. We're back on the train. Yeah. Moved a lot of material. Certainly. <clears throat> okay, Tom, we're into your report. Uh, first item I put in there was uh, acknowledgement of David Butler passing, what he had done for the Planning Commission. Is there anything the board wants to do? Send a thank you letter or something? I will. I think we want to send a sympathy letter. Really. Uh, oh, thank yeah. Are yeah. you are you talking about David Butler or the, yes? Okay, sympathy right. letter. In in it, it, we should acknowledge it. David's your uncle, right? Or was your uncle? Yes. Um, and he has two daughters. He does. Would that be an appropriate couple of people to send a sympathy card to? If the board so chooses. Well, I would like to at least recognize. I mean, he was on the planning committee since he started, basically. He served for uh, 12 years on the planning commission and the PRB, basically. Yeah. Long, long time. I'm fine with sending a simple letter to those two daughters. I think so. I think we should. Yeah. <laughs> Could we um, also put something on yeah. the town web 
page, just acknowledging that David passed. Do we need a motion to do that? Or? I'm not hearing any objections. We good. I think just we got consensus. It. Yep. Um, is there somebody who worked closely with him during those years that might help us write a letter? I think Paul would be the closest. And maybe you, you worked for David was on and you were on, wasn't he, Doug? He wasn't. Yeah. It was after. Yeah. Yeah. He was currently serving on both the DRB and the clinic commission. And the DRB position was pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> they met once. They didn't did meet at all, are they? And just once. Okay. I'm just thinking it might be nice to, in that letter, to acknowledge some of his contributions <coughs> beyond just saying, you know, we're. Sending our sympathy, but I don't know what those are. So, would the board be okay if Tom kind of just talked to Paul about getting a couple of contributions? And yeah, years served for a little blurb on the website and uh, see yeah. similar thing going in a sympathy letter. Yeah, and uh, you know, members of the board want to come in individual ones to sign it. It, it would probably be nice if it was offered to planning commission members too. Yeah. That would be nice to be able to sign it. Okay. Doug, you're in the hot seat. Rail Trail Let's Committee. Look. Oh, yeah. Expense request. Let's see. <laughs> and a wayfinding guidance. I think the expense request is probably. I'm going to do the expense request. Um, we have what I believe to be $24,100 in received in grant, $20,000 from the Community Foundation. Should I speak directly into the mic or is this okay? You're good. You're good. Um, and $4,100 came from Eddie Gale. Um, we have quite a bit of things in, in the works, but I'm limited tonight to, uh, to two matters on, on, on funding, authorizing for funding. One is that the, uh, I appeared at the trustee meeting and they've agreed to allow placement of the of bike racks at the Cold Spring uh, for usage there. And they, uh, we pri Kyle priced them out uh, for estimates where she's, Price some that she would like to get uh, have us get for five hundred and fifteen dollars. The uh, shipping is estimated to only be a hundred, and and at the meeting the uh, trustees said that they would install them, uh, they would maintain them. Uh, they wanted to have um, Nate and Eric look at siting there, uh, but they wanted us, our committee, or the town that is, to pay for the concrete. So we put a hundred dollars estimate for materials. You know, the, the reason for the concrete is that not only the mounting, but they wanted to have concrete so that the, uh, some sidewalk pads type so that they would have less mowing around them to do it. So that's $715. The, the other is that in September, you authorized the, um, the committee to apply for a, a building grant uh, that to finish off the, the Ted Alexander Welcome Center that had a 50% match. We received that, we were awarded that grant and for $6,425. And we have, uh, we've, uh, Randall checked with uh, the community foundation folks and they were happy that if we would use the money we received from them as as that match, so six thousand four hundred and twenty five dollars there. Is that fifty percent? That 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 is? yeah, it, it's an it's an equal amount. Okay, so it's an equal amount the, of the of the total expenditure. We cover fifty percent. Um, but the total grants around thirteen thousand. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, just just under thirteen. Um, and we will. Uh, I, I will tell you that. Brian Reliunitis is the person who submitted the, gave us the estimate and things like that, but we need an RFP on that, you know, 
I believe, you know, or whatever your policy is on, on that. But uh, uh, we, we were pleased that we could find somebody who would estimate and who would consider doing the work. But there afterwards, we got a grant. We have to do it properly at that point. Um, the uh, second, the third matter, I guess, is that um, we have, I put on your, uh, I handed out, uh, a uh, Lamoille Valley Rail Trail Community Grant Program. Um, and this is, uh, this has just come out. We're going to have a, our, the Rail Trail Committee meets on, on November 20th that we have something. And I don't know exactly what it is due on the 21st, but the grant application itself is due December 20th. The eligible, uh, projects are, are really um, useful to us, you know. Um, so U useless, useful, useful. 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 Okay. Oh, pardon me. Thought you said useless. No, said useful. Yeah. Um, so if you look on page two, the eligible project. Pretty broad. Um, do you have something in mind, a project in mind, Doug? We do, and and but we have uh, one of the things we worked up were, were uh, stone steps for the that would go from the old mill, uh, go to the old mill park from the trailhead. You know that steep grade. Oh yeah, that down. Yeah. And we needed an Act Two Fifty permit uh, in in order to. Yeah, yeah, I I jumped through the we jumped through the hoops. Uh, my communicating with Susan Baird, and and we need an Act Two Fifty permit to put them in, so we couldn't submit it with the last with the last grant. Uh, there are other possibilities for for this, so I can't um, uh, I can't say what we would necessarily come in. I'm giving you. I know that we have that proposal in the basket. Uh, we have your authority for the for the rail trail committee to apply for a the Act 250 permit that was granted in, in September. Uh, we haven't moved on that uh, yet, and uh, but you know I'll probably put that together. Um, the other there are other things that uh, public art uh, improving parking and trailheads. So we doing the trailhead, benches, science pavilions. There's a lot of stuff that, that we could do. I can't tell you what the committee would end up doing. Um, I wanted to put this in front of you basically to, to give you a, suggest a trust us motion, you know? Um, and that would be to, uh, to approve a grant application of the rail trail committee as they shall determine to file with the assistance of Randall Zott for the Lamoille County Rail Trail Community Grant Program, which has an application deadline of December 20th, 2024. I'm hoping not to come back for, you know, when, when we have a project, get your authority to, for Randall to work on it with us. And, and, uh, and I recognize the trust us part. It has a 20% match. The match would, would come out of our, the money that we have already in hand. All right. Now, complicating this, and there's a meeting on November 7th, is that the LCPC is applying for a grant with several Lamoille County towns, and it's under this program. And I called Randall and I asked him, are we prohibited from, you know, do, you know, can we apply separately or or do we are we prohibited, you know, from from applying for for uh, sending in an application uh, if if we are a member of this consortium? It is uh, the committee has a the rail trail committee approved the my vote, which was to be part of the consortium. But it is not as big a deal as some of the other items for us. So that is to be that's to be determined and it would take quite a bit for me to back off of that, but the, the community would be better off. Uh, and I don't, you know, it's, we were in for like one fourth and, and that was like uh, 
the, the local share of ours was like $638, something like that for, for and it was, it was a big, uh, uh, large size map just of the county, the county, the rail trail in the county and uh, other stuff that we wanted to put on it. So that is, uh, that is the information on the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail Community Grant. And so I, I got two requests on that. If you could authorize Randall to work on that, uh, we'll probably have an answer on Thursday of where the, you know, uh, where we stand with regard to, yes, you can go or uh, uh, you can go with the consortium with of the LCPC is heading or not. Does that make sense to you folks? Yeah. Question. So everything you've talked about so far, as far as money, nothing comes out of the town coffers. It's all paid for by grant money. And yeah. Money that's on hand. It's money. It's money that we have on hand. Right. And I will tell you frankly, it's money that we we had in some of it was money we had intended to spend on other stuff, but we'd lost track of. We hadn't been awarded the grant. And then the matching, so we we hadn't put in that into the math, as far as I can tell. So so we've got some things to work out as far as our, our own expenditures. I support anything that's more cost to the town, and a lot of things that do cost the town. But see, they here and there. So basically, what you want is authorization to pursue this grant, and then authorization to have Randall help you. Yeah. As well as authorization to expend spend funds. To, to expend funds from that we already have for a proposal that we develop. And that's a motion, Michael. So. He's already yeah. seconding it. There's no motion. I said if that is a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. All right. There's a All motion right. on the floor. Is there a second? Yes, sir. Further discussion. You have one. Um I just would ask, or you think Randall will, you'll use him till Thursday? Is that what I got? He was going to get back to you by Thursday on the conflict of interest. And... No, uh, I called Randall and he told me he did not know what the answer was as far as uh, whether or not uh, we would be prohibited from, if we're a member of the consortium, the, the group of applying separately for one right, grant right. that would but be more. Was, I guess the point I'm getting at, Doug, is are you going to use Randall 200 hours in the next month? Or are you going to use Randall two hours? Or you, get, you know, I'm Randall works for Duncan here. <laughs> I just just curious as to what you think you'll need Randall for, for how many hours yeah, it's, it's, it's time. That's all. Uh, well. In the past, Kyle had done a lot of work helping. We know, and, and you know, it's not two hundred hours. You know, I tell you that. You know, uh, it, it's kind of like what we did for the Borac grant, except that you know, if if we choose to do the stone steps, we have that all in place. You know, the committee or myself and someone else will do the Act Two Fifty. You know. Okay, I'm I'm just trying to understand. So Randall's time will be minimal. Randall's will be appropriate for the job and in, in the amount of money we're spending, you know. Perfect well. answer from the attorney. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a lawyer answer? Right? Yeah, that is 100% on spot on. It's only $350 an hour, so. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, is the concern with the, with the grant that you could, the LCPC is going to definitely going to submit a grant and you have kind of signed on as a participant and whether or not you can independently make an application yeah yeah it, it that that's right exactly you know and and i uh, you know double dipping yeah it, it will they consider double dipping you know and then you know there, there's another concern beyond that was if if we're you know uh how, how what's the probability of being awarded you know right. all of these things are more randall's you know bailiwick and and i i randall said he thought that it was a good idea to participate in a county-wide thing we do not need this at our trailhead because we're going to have a crackerjack 
uh, uh, display that that, that uh, Adrian has put together. But I don't believe that it's uh, uh, inappropriate to have a map like that to put downtown for more information someplace for, for people there. So I voted for it. Now, what's my authority to vote? Even I was appointed, you know, I haven't gone back to you. I didn't, you know, the rail trail committee could say we don't want you to ask the select board for the money you know it's like i'm, I'm sort of feel naked in this you know as far as what i'm what i'm doing you know i just i did my best job and and now it, and i gave my you know they asked how many want to participate right they said i said okay johnson you know maybe what i'm hinting at is maybe we should go back on that uh but i don't like it but and i hope we don't have to you're about to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want you guys to know. Have you reached out to Jackie Casino at the rail trail? He's um, kind of has the rail trail program. She's very hard to get back to you. I'll just send her an email with that same question. That's that's. This Thursday is a meeting on that for that information. All right. All board members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? I believe that covered both of your requests. Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. All Good. right. You, All right. Now that you're asleep and I just about blew it, um, here's. There's more. There's more. The wayfinding guidance. The wayfinding guidance. You know, um, the more I read it, uh, I guess I understand it, but it's you have to put this into context. This is about providing people on who are rail trail users or driving on highways or driving on town roads information on, and it's limited to this, what's called trail friendly businesses, all right? And we've been, I went around town to like 27 places and sent in the applications, gave them the application, told them to do that. Um, the probably, uh, you know, and this is only one, one way of information. We're, we have a kiosk. We're going to have uh, Beth Foy, Kyle and Adrian are working on, on a revised website, which I'm gonna suggest be incorporated into our recreation. Uh, uh, economy thing, and uh, we we're going to have QR codes and things like that. So this is, but this is physical. And what what the um, I want you to go to uh, if, if you go to read on page three the purpose and need. So well, what does that mean? That means that they are, they, VTrans is trying to find some way to provide signage to our businesses. And where are they talking about signage? They're talking about signage on the rail trail itself. They're talking about signage on the state highways. And they're talking about uh, signage on on our, our town highways. Now, if you look at, uh, and and kind of the reason I'm bringing this up is that uh, they, they haven't told you, but they've involved you. If you go to page eight, in the middle on, on figure three, wayfinding signs within the state highway right away. See number three, municipality submits proposed on-trail wayfinding sign, you know? It, it's you you folks are going to be supposedly going to be do that um and that that's within the state highway uh right away if you go to the next page which is page nine which is wayfinding signs within the state rail trail right away you find that the municipality submits proposed on-trail wayfinding signs 
designed with schematic of subsequent community wayfinding sign as they laid out through the town or village to the rail trail council. You know, they want you to be doing that. I think I heard Tory, Victoria Helwig say the rail trail council hasn't even been appointed yet, okay? <laughs> this is unfolding as, we, as, as, as they do it. Now, um, and then if you see on the rail trail, number five, VTrans is putting them in. On, on the state highway right away, they're going in by maybe installed and maintained by the municipality. Right? If you go to down further on, on page um, nine, you see wayfinding signs within the town highway right away. Okay. They are, and bear in mind, this is only trail friendly businesses. This is only the people that uh, that apply uh, or supposedly apply um, to become a trail friendly business. It's really, really important because you know it, it's the idea is to get people off the rail trail, off the highways, on the rail trail, and on our town highway. What I would suggest to you is that besides this type of signage, we should be sending putting up signs like. Uh, Beard Park, places like that. Uh, the Arboretum is, is being signed now. Uh, uh, there are uh, 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 others, you know, and the town will probably be biting bullet on that, but hopefully we'll do that. So at some point, you know, I, you folks are going to have to pass on this. And here is talk about this is the work in progress it's your stuff you got a big heat source here Didn't bring that. The um, thought I brought. Oh, here is kind of you know, in there. You'll find how they're proposing to do this. Here you'll find the current status of the non non V trans stuff. Um, how they may roll this out. And some of the what they're hoping to do is to create a very uniform signage throughout the, the trail system, Doug. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so that when I see green and whatever, white with a train on it. Yeah, we, we, we should completely cooperate with the, with, with the, the message, you know. Uh, and yeah. so here is uh, on the back, the back page is a list of people who they have say would be our businesses. I have, you know, I went through that and I have more businesses, you know, that should be added to this, but that that's not, you know, um, and, and one thing just as a sidelight, you should notice is that there's no housing here, you know, just as a sidelight for our, for where we are for helping people. Anyway, uh, we'll be, back to you and this is basically to educate you that at least according to their regulations you have a role to play in in getting all of the signs onto the rail trail the state highways and on our town highways for for these businesses is that something that the rail trail committee is prepared to take on and make a recommendation i'm sure we'll we'll make well i'm sure we'll recommend we've we've already been passing names on okay um but i don't think that uh, we we certainly can make recommendations to you but you know i wanted you to know it's coming because you know here I am taking all of this time, boring you to death, and 
you don't want to hear it again, but you know, this is going to be there and we'll need it will need to be addressed. Well, the other question I would have too is um, is there are there grant programs that can help address well, some of the signing read, needs? If you take a look at the, the letter uh, from Tori to me, um, that the, with regard to the wayfinding guidance, it's the third paragraph. VTrans has said in the past that wayfinding signage directly users off trail should be a trail wide endeavor. It's connected to a, the trail friendly business program. And the now that the trail friendly business program is coming to fruition, other planners are starting to discuss, coordinate with VTrans and how signage project will look and can be paid for. You know, that's all I know. There, these VTrans rules on, on wayfinding say that uh, that the uh, trail friendly businesses have to be located in certain distance signage in different places, things like that. But it, it also says that they have to commit to put a map in their place and do certain things. You know, my understanding is that we're just going to that LCP is going to send out a letter out to the people say, we've included you on the list. Do you want to opt out? Quick and dirty. So it's where the regulatory doesn't meet the road. All right. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. I like that you still have a P shift email address, Doug. Uh -huh. Does that mean I'm getting old? Oh, you. <laughs> It's older than having that address. Thank you. That's ageist, Mark. No, it's not ageist. I'm just being real. Do you have any questions? Read the wayfinding guys. It's stunning. Stunning stuff. Well, it's exciting. No, no. Thank you for your work. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, Casey's hiding it. I didn't give him my apple fire. Well, we might have to arrest you as much as your apples. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is the library location. <coughs> Your report, Tommy, say there's two RFPs. This was written in anticipation of having more information, but I just forwarded that. I don't know if you saw that at four o'clock. I might have missed that. Probably. Sorry. When we now have all everything ready from the engineers to put those out, <coughs> probably tomorrow, when I meet with you guys for the budget, we can look at those real quick and maybe put them out. Uh, the RFP for architectural work and the building numbers. The interested parties in the general public. Is the board good with that? Anything else? Library folks are all here. You outnumber us. <laughs> if that's all, I guess we'll. I mean, we are the board already approved Duncan and I to review them and get them out. So I don't see a problem with that. The board's comfortable. Fine by me. Okay. Probably Brian and Alan is going to do the move. Oh. <laughs> Pick it up. <laughs> He's doing everything. I'll send this to you guys. All right, next item is the industrial park. Uh, nothing big at this point, but we discussed last week in the library and industrial park. Probably standing items for a while. So nothing's really need, needed, but there may be something that comes up at the 1118 meeting, and that would be could you explain that a little bit better? For the industrial park. Yeah. Um, we met last Wednesday, and to be honest, I'm mostly just paying attention for agenda items. Um, Mumley's going to have a couple documents that need to be signed as a formality. Um, it's going to have to be sort of Duncan as the uh, NBRC signature authority, um, and then there's also some decision making points that will that will be coming up, and as those get finalized, it, I was spoke I was best hopes was to have them in this packet, but they weren't. Um, I got got the note they would not be ready uh, for Mumley, and so hopefully we have them for the 18th. And Randall will be it's actually perfect. Randall will be here to better explain them than I can, of course. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. There was some concern about timing and making sure documents are signed in time, but um, it seems to be okay. All righty. 
Thank you. So Board have any questions about the industrial park? Yeah. Timeline? For the industrial park? Yeah. So right now, um, it's still moving forward with NEPA. Um, that's that's the big infirmity. Delays. That's the signature authority is for us to push them, those documents through NEPA's federal um, environmental review. And then I think um, I think that's really just permitting is really the only delay right now. Once that gets through, um, they're waiting on some state. Uh, like a jurisdictional decision on agricultural mitigation and whether or not they need it or not. It was first an issue. It was first understood that we would not need it. And now it seems to be gray, but not defined as we need it. So I hopefully only in the other way, it just hasn't been formally issued. So nothing's going to happen next year. I think it will. I, I think if, if we stay on this, we should, and I think we should focus to get it done next year. Because contractors in the following summer are going to be book solid. So if we don't do it next summer, we're going to be fighting with every ARPA project under the sun. And there's going to be millions of dollars that need to be spent by December 20, 31st. And so if we have any construction window, it needs to be next summer. We should get contractors booked by May so we don't have to compete with other towns and other municipal entities spending ARPA money. I think that should be like the hard focus is to like make sure this happens, or at least we get a contract with a with with somebody so that it gets done with a deadline so other towns did not get on to shifting the arpa, ARPA funds like we did we just kind of rolled them into there's a lot our of life. state programs that are just delegated out the library is one the vermont we have two yeah two open no but what i'm saying yeah. is they're feeling arpa pressure we're not feeling arpa pressure there aren't but there's a lot of state programs that are okay. and i think you know the fact that johnson has two projects alone that are feeling this pressure um, we really should just put it to bed, get it nailed down, or we might risk pushing out the 27. Yeah. Just why not? Why not just get it done? We waited 10 years. We have we have a staff person who can handle it. So, all right. Well, thank you. Any further on the industrial park? I don't see any. Our next item is the LCPC presentation. Uh, but I'm sure the board saw Tom's email. Marshall Wallace is sick, so they're going to be looking to reschedule that. Is that why you came? Oh. Maybe, oh, may I ask a question? Sure. Okay. Since Tasha isn't here, um, one of the things I hope to learn, and maybe you guys can illuminate answers here, is I <coughs> can only see flood recovery stuff in various bits and pieces. I mean, there's the FEMA piece, and then there's the state FEMA piece, and then there's the reimagined Johnson piece, and then there's the L LCPC piece. How do they all work together, or who's the boss? Or I mean, and ultimately, these five people are the boss for all of it. Yeah, it involves any municipal involvement. But we just signed on two weeks ago to this, or on the 30th, recovery last week with a flood recovery right. program through FEMA. Okay, that the, was the FEMA thing from last week. One of the things that they mentioned they would do is they would kind of tie all the pieces together. It doesn't mean they're going to organize the project, but they're going to make sure the right hand is talking to the left. And I think that's going to be part of this larger flood, flood recovery plan. Is putting together all the HMGP projects, putting together what Reimagine Johnson says, putting together what the select board wants, and which is so that we're not having competing interests, but having interests alongside each other. So, but uh, I get that these, you know, you guys prioritize and allocate, but when it comes to, you know, if Kim Canarecki is FEMA boss of but from Vermont, does she make decisions? And then where does that FEMA group get in? Make I mean, decisions it... on, she will make decisions on how state federal FEMA funds are spent within Vermont. And if Vermont, almost like we're a sub recipient mm -hmm. of the state of Vermont. So, oh, okay. so say we get half a million dollars, we're going to get $466,000 for FEMA. Mm -hmm. I should just jump in that mm -hmm. up. So. 
that's going to come back to us. Right. That has to go to Impaner ID. She's right. going to verify our work and verify our administration and verify our receipts, and then she's going to release that fund. So her she, her role is really like the oh. gatekeeper to the money to make sure we did the right thing. And she also doles out the mat, the, the Vermont matching funds piece. You know, I got an email today that I'm still trying to figure out where that um, DRAP money comes yeah, from. I, and in 2023, I think there was some legislation, legislative action. Ron, I don't know if you know this. So there was some legislative action about making towns whole after the 2020 yeah, flood. Yeah. I have not. We received 166000 the other day. And it was only for our 75% piece from Kim Kanaraki. And I'm still pushing to figure out which section of treasury is going to give us that 12 and a half percent and which section of treasury is going to give us that other 12 and a half percent of um legislative funds and, and i might have those percentages wrong but uh, thank you yeah. <laughs> i think it's closer to uh, 92 and a half percent but yeah. um, we should be made whole as a legislative intended as legislation intended but i don't understand how yet um, so then that those figures come to this board. Um, do you do you guys then have the option of reallocating them among the various town projects? If it goes back to the coffers, so it was the coffers that spade the money and it's a reimbursement scheme. So it's really they've been the town has been operating in debt for this whole FEMA project, right. and now we're made whole. And then if there's this unextended funds at the end of the year they the board has the ability to allocate that out that makes sense so i mean, I mean, I mean it, yes yes it, it depends does. on what what fema leg you're dealing with i guess what um, FEMA, what fema leg you're dealing with because you know the fema reimbursement for the 2023 flood is reimbursed funds by FEMA and then apportioned by the state. That's money that's spent and paid back. And when you do a hazard mitigation grant, such as Holmes Meadow, when you deal with a hazard mitigation grant, such as Holmes Meadow, that again is expended funds that the town is reimbursed for. As far as I know, FEMA doesn't randomly send us checks ahead of schedule and then we get to reorganize where they go. So it's re the thing that it's reimbursement then? It's reimbursed funds. I don't know that people walk around and actually write checks to towns based on what they think they the need to write. The state court is slightly different mm -hmm. because it's there, it's still reimbursement. The town's going to have to put in that approved project right. and then get reimbursed back. They're just agreeing that this approved project is okay. different than return to free flow. It's like a mitigation right. project. That this all helps. It, there may be more confusion in the future. Thank all you. right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything further on the right away for the Arboretum, Tom? Nope. Uh, it's been put to bed, and that is a huge win for the town. All right. Thank you for taking care of that. Sweet. Uh, you didn't run any, any pushback from anybody. High fives go along the way. Yeah. Bills. Website redesign bid award approval. Uh, I believe you could jump in if I'm wrong here, Tom. The board had passed an ex board member, Shane Spence, along with Charles Blom and yourself, to look at the RFPs and come back with a recommendation. A recommendation from the subcommittee, if you will, is to use town web. As your recommendation number one, and to use Davis Hill Designs as recommendation number two. Yeah. What would the board like to do? I think we could probably afford it. Obviously, it's obviously more expensive. I think we have. No, I just made it. What what's that then? It's a, a report that I was gonna give. Oh sure. You can hand that with the other. Yeah. Well, you can do it. It's kind of simplifying the reasons to Yeah, I trust I trust their work. 
Thank you. What's the bottom number? Uh, One trillion dollars. This is the news. This is something else. I think we can remove the three one one. So I don't. I don't yeah. really keep that in your numbers. I um I I presented it to actually both boards last. Yeah, I was gonna say we talked about it last Wednesday. Yeah, we built that one together. It's twenty six twenty four bill. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know it's eight hundred for start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 26 20 per year. So after that. Yeah. That's what we're looking at. And they're going to. This total. Uh, we're either selecting a contractor or not. Yeah. And then it's the village. Okay. So that's the order. So I'm holding the whole Huh? If the village comes on board and that is wanting to pay for some of this, we'll agree. I think that the select board needs to make a decision to either proceed with a contractor or not and budget for next year. Uh, but we don't need to hinge our decision based on that we're going this alone or I agree with a party. Um what you say you don't want to go through this or you do, or what do you want to do? Um, um, oh. Sorry, I was answering his question. Oh, okay. I just <clears throat> was trying to cool. I'm wondering Charles. where the right. village was. We could just read this all together. We'll just go down it real fast. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So both providers list all the RFP points, and both providers had professional designs. However, there were major differences in how the RFP requirements were achieved, as well as additional considerations that were. Um, that made Town Web the committee's first choice. The report does not directly address the cost. However, it was noted, and I hear that the 311 was taken out of that. So, and here is the breakdown real fast. The track record for with websites for municipalities, Davis had none. Town Web had approximately 800. Uh, ease of use, and we had, of course, asked uh, something to be based on WordPress. Um, which actually town web was originally about 10 years ago and then they built custom so while WordPress is currently used by the town. The platform is made for a wide range of industry and is not designed specifically for towns it's back end design administration that would be for people that are running it is not simplified or intuitive and is not designed for people who are not who are it's not designed for people who are uncomfortable with running computers. Town Web is a custom built design specifically for towns. It's back end design administration is simplified, intuitive, designed for people who are not comfortable with running computers. Content management this is words and images. Uh, new users who are not comfortable with adding new content and images can be problematic. The other side, I was always keep thinking of Casey Romero, you know, has to be really, really simple for anybody who's on that level. Um, sorry, Casey. Um, due to a simplified intuitive design, new users who are not comfortable with added new content and images face fewer obstacles. Upgrades and capabilities, added capabilities must be found on the website, so, uh, found by the website administrators and then ask Davis Design to add these capabilities. So say there was something really cool and new that would save you lots of money. We have to find it first and then turn around and go, hey, this would be great. Why don't you add it? Um, and so that that would be the, the process with Davis designs um, and adding new plugins require uh, capabilities require new plugins, which would require extra training. The new capabilities for town web, they are offered to the website administrators. So, so they think of them, they come to you and say, hey, do you want this? So there's it's much easier for us. And due to the large number of town clerks, they are dealing with 800. So if any of these people go ahead and say, hey, this would be really cool. Because when I talked to them and they asked me, hey, what do you think? So they have all these town clerks across the country who ask them something. And they're like, oh, we will add that. And they reach out to the other people and say, hey, would you be interested? And then they build it and add that into their site. Uh, so new capabilities are directly incorporated into the platform. There are no additional plugins and making <laughs> extra training for those capabilities and new users minimal. So, for example, Town Web is now offering automatic minutes and documentation creation. So, you know, whether how you would want to go, that's a big payroll saver, too. Um, the email integration, uh, uh, 
uh, WordPress is MailChimp. It's a separate integration, whereas with uh, TownWeb, it's actually built into the platform. It's super easy to use. Pretty much anybody could on, on a page for, say, Tuesday Night Live, on a page for the Beautification Committee. There's like a little form there. Want, do you want to get notices? Fill in your email, click, and it goes into a separate list where if we ask ask um, the person who's doing it for the town, hey, uh, here's, here's the email, please send it. They go in, they type it in, hit the button, and it's gone just to those people. So it's like super intuitive and easy. The town meeting, that happens on the town website. It's streamed right there. You don't have to use Zoom, okay? That's another thing, comes right in. Uh, village system integration from Davis, none is offered, okay? Uh, and it would be very hard to do that for town web, electric, sewer, water, and taxes are now currently offered. They can type in their account number, their bill comes up and pay right there. It's all on one page. They don't have to hop around to the website. Um, let's see here, continued support issues. So if something happens with one of the, you know, something happens, something changes, you've got to go to the website creator if she's not available, you're going to have to wait till she's available. Town web, they have a dedicated IT support. You just call them. It's one call. What happens if the site goes down? Same thing. And you have to call her or the hosting company. Now that's a drag because the hosting companies are huge. You're not going to get them on the phone or they're not going to answer you within an hour or two if you email them. But town web, dedicated IT support. It's one call. And that's it. Did you try calling that number by any chance? I've talked to them multiple times. They're easy to get a hold of. <laughs> I think I've, I've talked to them. Um, platform, this is one of the bigger ones also, platform security. So like I said before, as I told you, the car, you got all these plugins, it's all third parties. When, when security comes, all of them have to update and it's the different plugins are from different server or different website software providers. They have to do the upgrade. Whereas with town web, it's like, here's the upgrade security upgrade. It does it for the whole site done. So there's the analogy would be as far as security is that there's a, a car in the parking lot. Somebody wants to break into it's got everything good except one window has a gap this large. With Town Web, the windows are totally closed. So that would be an analogy of that. Uh, training, um, you know, Davis had in person, which is good, but then it would be manual or written documentation. Whereas training for Town Web is an onboarding session uh, via Zoom or whatever they're using, and then they have a library of videos which anybody can go over at their leisure. Um, and so in closing, uh, Davis Design was the lowest bid, but Town Web's added capabilities and numerous attributes and a bunch that are not listed here. Um, and the increased security made it you know, pretty clear. It's not a huge amount of money more and you're getting a lot more. So, and, and, and it wasn't in Davis Designs, um, in, in her benefit, I would say that, yeah, it was, it was she had a great design, but the WordPress platform in itself, like I, I said, and describing these things before, this is a car and you got all these third party, you know, pieces in, and then this one's actually made in the, the factory. And so that's basically it. Any questions? Come on, Mark. If Casey can use it, I'm right with it. Hey, Casey, oh, you are you're you're throwing a lamb chop at the lion here. <laughs> I, I have a question. Uh, for you. Okay. But it's well, it's broad. Okay. So the simple version is as you look at these comparisons, which company does the best job of figuring out who needs to know what? Well, who needs to know what is decided by uh, the people within the town that uh, want to, you know, um, some towns had, a, had people, committee members doing stuff. Uh, other towns wanted it controlled by one or two people. So they are the ones that 
it, and, and it seems like I was talking to Tom, it seems like that that would be the case here. However, um, uh, they, the system is designed so that if you are, what's your, your committee is beautification, right? No, what are you? Skate park. Skate park, right. So it's designed that if we just wanted to have you just, you know, go in there and just do stuff for skate park, it will restrict her to just skate park. Which Same Davis thing with Hill will not do. what Which Davis Hill will not do. Uh, Davis Hill, that was the question I didn't get asked. Um, I'm not, they have user restrictions, so that might be able to be built into there. Um, that I, I do know that WordPress can do something like that. Um, I'm not, but once again, the ease if she was in there. She could add a picture and content right away. So that's I think one of the main differences that was discussed. It's like when you go with a smaller web design company, we're telling them what we want. And we assume we know how the municipality website should function, should look like. Whereas Town Web will be guiding us to design the main framework and then we add the flair. So it'll, it'll function with the services that municipalities need to offer. That was kind of one of the the main difference is what we're trying to, the other one, we would have to design those services based on what we think we need. And, and to do that, he's actually absolutely right. To do that, you have to have a vision of actually what you need. And for future capabilities, you've got to actually figure out how to build that in. And it's, I can tell you from somebody who's built a lot of sites that along the process, all of a sudden you'll have an aha moment and you'll go back to your developer and yeah, they can do that, but aha costs more money. So, and that happens constantly. So, so you, you just hit on, on my question. Okay. <laughs> right now um, we're operating under the assumption that the village is likely to pony up and want to be part of this website, but we don't know that for sure. Okay. So we're we're ultimately going to make a decision tonight based on our needs. Um, and if the village wants to jump in, great. What I what I'm my question is is twofold. One, if it was town only, would your recommendation be the same? Yeah. And two is if the village does want to jump in and participate and they do this electric uh, the future town system integration stuff is that going to cost more money uh probably would but they have to offset that by uh, the like the metrics that i would well i mean we, we don't know their numbers but i can tell you i interviewed like four or five town clerks that were using these around the country. The ones that had done the integration, they found about a third of their customers used that. So they were, you know, those people didn't have to get paper and envelopes sent to them. And it was, uh, you know, that and the other capabilities of, there were pages where there would be a dog license. That's the town or the village, town. that's the town. So there would be things like that, that you wouldn't even see a form. It would just be a field, name, this, 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 pay, click. So, it, you know, so I would still say for both, I would say that, it, and, and for the village, it actually makes a lot more sense if they do that because it takes some, you know, some hours away from their payroll. You know, a lot of these things come down to, can you save money with these companies? And, and so that was part of my criteria as to what can it do? Can it save money? Does that make sense in regards to an extra thousand or $2,000 a year? And it came, we came down to yes. Mm -hmm. Do you envision a time when property tax bills could go out a little bit? That's part of it. Yeah. That's part of that. Wow, well, not many people are going to do that. No, but as time goes on, um, it they, will change. Yeah, the village already uses a what do they call it? It's a, a uni pay, I think, or gov pay. Yeah, but it's some. Most of our traffic is actually the village right now, right? For those 
utility payments and utility bills, but the we have a, a legal requirement to have a website that does legal required things that comply with ADA compliance as of April 1st. So we have to work with a company that A, understands ADA compliance and understands the requirements of state law, what we have to have available on the website. So those, that's why there's some piece there that's helpful. There's gonna be a fee on these charges. So very few people are gonna do that. It depends what your, what your processor fee is. There will be a fee. Well, it's like 3.25 or whatever. Whatever. I mean, if, uh, on a $10,000 bill, that's a... Oh, 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 change. for... for uh, okay, I'm sorry. So you're going to... I'm definitely going to come in with a check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, too. Well, we don't, <laughs> I would, too. You come in with the cash, huh? But I think a, a lot of people <laughs> in the world... Just an expression. <laughs> I'm down with that. No, a, right, now there's a fee on it. Um, I think we have a question from the audience. Can, can I ask? You, I just wanted to ask. I was asked the same thing that Duncan uh, uh, was Mike. asking. Uh, Michael Mike. was going to ask. Is that is there a fee to like if you paid your bill online? Is there a fee to, to use their services? Yeah, there is. There is. Now. But there is a fee to charge if you call in and pay your taxes online, or even a call on the phone. They they charge a fee to pay your taxes with a debit card. Yeah, because they're just using office. that. They're using that same service. Yeah, they just log in for you. Yeah, yeah. That, that service. Why would we have to pay a tax, you know, uh, extra money to pay our own taxes? Because why does the town have to? The town, the town because, village? because the credit card processor is charging the town to run that credit card. So, so if, we, if we didn't charge people that fee, we would have to raise that amount of money that we would be billed on the tax rate, and then everybody would be paying. Right now, you can opt to pay the fee if you want to use a credit card, or you can just come in with a check or cash and not pay it. But the credit card companies charge you every time you swipe a card. Yeah, the merchant you're oh, going to. Oh, I understand. The merchant. That was my question too. What my class too is like, you know, you know, they're gonna they're gonna charge you for that service. Absolutely. What's the bottom line on these two things here? Let's um, get this moving. I think they're about fifteen hundred apart, aren't they? I want to know what the yeah. the first charge is, and then the yearly charge. Town Web's setup fee is eighteen hundred, and then their annual maintenance is two thousand six hundred and twenty dollars per year. Um, that sheet was really easy for me to find. I think she was eleven fifty a year. Davis or Hill plus was the plus website the redesign and maintenance service. The website redesign was four thousand dollars, but the yearly fee was one thousand one hundred and forty dollars. But however, if you read the fine details, she's also not including all the charges for the for the plugins. Right. Yeah, I think those yep. are on the next page. And they're third party services. Yeah. And that that also that boosts her her yearly up closer to what they are. So it's it's almost apples. So reading what you just said and which I've got in front of me, the the setup fee is eighteen hundred, and then uh, twenty six twenty per year thereafter. And that's it. Um, the the initial is is higher than eighteen hundred. I thought. Yeah, well, it says website setup fee on here. Right, but then they're also it, there's a bunch of other stuff within their first year. It, it, they're they're higher than her. They're more like the, the like the they're a couple of thousand dollars higher than she is. At, instead well, of well, the that's first the point. year, I want to know exactly what yeah, where are those buried. Yeah. Well, I think it's thirty two hundred for the initial setup for Town Web. If you read, uh, the little red check marks are not. Um, it looks like so 3200 versus Davis Hill Design is, and their initial setup was 4000. Um, where and then the annual fee is 12, uh, the first year is slightly higher for Davis Hill, but 1230. And the annual fee for Town Web is 2620, a difference of 1400 a year. So Town Web is $800 cheaper for the initial setup, and but it's $1,400 a year more expensive annually. If we don't need the third-party services. Yeah. yeah, I would. 
I, I can't tell you how much more there's a huge difference in capabilities and, and it's like a totally different animal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to trust the, the people, the committee that went out and yeah. I would recommend and make a motion that we go forward with town web as our, um, well, I have no problem going with town web myself. I think we'll get but a better I, product. I do too, but I don't really, I'd like to see like a bottom line because we're just adding stuff up and assuming certain things are going to be. I want to see an actual list from the company with the same answer, the same questions that I have yeah, I was before I approve anything. Pricing table. It's just a pricing table. This is a menu. Let's go through the menu uh, that, that we want and have them come back with the proposal that that's going to be the price we're going to pay. Well, I think we just, I don't think they have to come back. We just need to collate what they've given us in a way that you and I can wrap our minds around it. Not no, spread out. Tom yeah, I don't have, it. Right. Yeah. Tom did call away. He it? did, but I, I'd like to see it on a on a piece of paper, just like we got from Davis Hill. Davis Hill gave us the quote. Where'd you come up with the extra 1800, Tom? Was it in previous pages or was it this 600, 800, 400 on top of the- I dropped the 400, the communications platform. And I just added the design of course the chosen theme and content mitigation. I mean, okay. those have to get done. The communication platform, I think, would be optional. May, may not be okay. Done. So, what Tom is doing, I know what he's yeah. doing. I know what he's doing. But you've got this from Davis Hill. It has a total right here 51. Yep. 40. So, I guess. I mean, the rest of the board can approve it. If you have a majority, so be it. But I will be voting. Did you make a motion? I did make a motion. All right. There's a oh. motion on the floor to go with town sure. web. Motion a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Duncan, how do you vote? I know. Mark? Aye. Mike? Aye. Nay. Peter? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank okay. you for your work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Charles, that was a lot of work. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the thoroughness. This would have been great Friday. Who would have come in and been like? I'm sorry, but I was I was away all last <laughs> week. I or else I would have done it. Yeah. Um Grow Cemetery. I believe we have people that have been waiting patiently, and I'm looking for it in the packet here. Uh, we don't have anything in the packet. It was just Duncan's uh, email. Oh, you did. Okay. And I just did not print out the Would you be willing to go? Oh, is it ready to go? Um, it is. The, the one thing that I think is a question that the board needs to answer is the way the, the, way the deed is written right now. It allows... Uh, not more than three cremains for lots two through seven. In other words, six lots for a total of 18 total burials of cremains. There's been a, an interest expressed by at least Tina that perhaps that number could be increased to four cremains for lots, which would give you 24 total burials of cremains. Because, as I recall, Duncan, it was like three cremains and one, one body per lot. No, it was two cremains and one body per lot, right? Actually, the deed that we worked no, from okay. was one burial or three cremains. Three cremains. Okay. That's, that's the Evergreen Ledge model, which is one what or I... Three. One or three. One body or three cremains. What would be a reason not to put four? It seems like there's plenty of space. There, there talking is. about the lot. No, I, 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 I a pretty big size. You know, four there, by thirteen. Four by thirteen. Yeah, that's a lot of urns. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's personally, a, I have no issue allowing four. You know, that would basically give you, you know, four by three um, per, you know, for lot. Yeah, roughly speaking. This is the version three that's just like Scott. How's the how's the board feel about yeah. four commanders per lot? Yeah. On the D. That's the one I'm fine with that. But you folks happy with them. Well we looked I looked it up. 
And it's up to the town. Yes, I agree. But it says either a two by two or a three by three for each turn. If you take three by three, how many can you put in 13 feet? 13 by what? Four foot by 13. It's 12 foot nine by four foot, right? Yes. So I'm really not a whiz here. Well, you can't go, you can only put one wide and if it's three feet. How many long? 4.33, so you could like. So square footage wise, you could do five. This is like a puzzle. You did your three by three. That's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't really split four yeah. foot into three foot and right. then have a foot strip. Yeah, and you gotta, I mean, there needs to be some sort of stone or monument at the yes. head of each one. So I think, you know, some of that gets eaten up. Some of it gets eaten up. I Wouldn't it be so better to just set a whole limit which you could put in all the extra lots well, with the space we've doing. got? I think that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Oh no. So, so like, like so if one person has more family members than the other, no. my sister could give me a foot of hers and I could put three on my lot. Three for two foot. You see what I'm saying? Do you want to do one D for I see what you're saying? No, I'm just asking. I'm I'm not I'm not questioning what you guys are judging. It just it doesn't matter to me. I guess that's after I'm dead, it's not gonna matter to me. To me, that would should just be done out in the deed right now. So. I'll come out of any of it. Can it just be deeded? Uh, let me go oh, along. Mom and dad's estate. We know that one's deed, right, Duncan? Yes. Yes. The others, can it just be deeded to the three of us? There's me, Bruce, and Gary. Just deed the whole thing. If they decide, if I decide I don't want to be there, they can have the rest. Of it. I drop out. You probably have to be an additional D just for cleanliness to say, say there's three three spots left when somebody comes to say, I, you know, am beating this lot to so and so. You know, just just so it stays in line. So there's people on the ground next to these in the vault. That's like. But didn't, but didn't Vermont just pass a natural burial law that you can you throw 100 people over the bank and they don't get natural burials and they don't care? I, I don't think that's quite. Well, I'm just saying, I'm not making 100, but yeah. it's, it's green burial, um, the, the law. And even though it's green burial, it's there's a body in the. In the but if you don't have an urn, I mean, yeah, yeah. You got a whole body. body. You got, You've got the body. full body. Oh, full body. I see. Yeah. 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 I mean, it might we be in a cardboard a box, box, but I think, I think we need to set a precedent. Are here. there six lots left? That's right. Yes. Essentially, lot six lots left. So, does it, I think to be because this deed is formed to the White Hill family, which I believe would be Leona okay, yes. or her power of attorney. <laughs> This one is structured to be to the remaining surviving children of Leona and Nelson, oh. which would be Gary, Tina, and Bruce. So we should, so it is already structured. But it, it already is structured. It's just not on paper. Yeah, this is the paper that we're putting it on. So right. So for the but board tonight, is do you want that to say three how many? Lot or four, the, right. the current rules that we're using in Evergreen are three. Because they're long, I'm fine with four. That Same here. Work. I'm good with four also. So if we could, if we could change this draft from three to four, yeah. I think we're good. You're shaking your head. No, you're not good. You're fine with four. Well, that's four. That gives me eight. Him eight and Gary eight. Right. Yeah. yeah. Two and three yeah. would yeah. be one. Yeah. Four and five, and six and seven. Yeah. Am I right? That's eight mm -hmm. for for one. Is Twenty-four one. total. Yeah. Right. Right. There you go. That's a, that's what I was asking. Yeah, just because the total. Yeah. Twenty-four. So have total. Have total. Fine Good. You can sell some. The only other thing I have to say oh, is they done a phenomenal job on the fence. Phenomenal. Love it. Except for one thing. Access I want to know why, and probably most of you haven't seen it. 
But on mom's side of the property, the side of Gary's garage, there was a gateway put in there. If you want to go to that graveyard, you've either got to walk through where the cars come or you're going to walk through my mother's driveway to come in that gate. That should not have been there. It gives Gary free right whenever he wants. I understand offense. I understand the walk, what you know, walk gate, but I don't understand that you have to walk through somebody's private property to get to it when there's a whole road frontage. Yeah. yeah. There's no gate on the road front. Only one on Gary. We no. talked about it in person. I'll go up and look at it and meet Jason. Should be a gate in the front. We put we had we, we talked about three different places and we talked about an additional one which they could put beams back up in the event the White Hill family is no longer maintaining. So the one on the side for Gary was for maintenance only I believe that could be put beams back up. And uh there was supposed to be one along the front. We looked at three, one in the front uh, left corner, but there's like chains from the next lot and then there was one in the middle but it was quite a burn from the road it would have to have some significant grading there and the other one was on the far right side by the by the sign as that but it, you would almost have to drive a mower over that cornerstone that says g for the initial throw there wasn't a great access point um and I, i'll go up and take a peek and see if there's another solution but at that time those were the those were the three ideas and none of them were great so i'll but i, I didn't I didn't see the final solution. That's my only thing. They did a phenomenal job. Picking the fence, the slit rail looks beautiful. I, I certainly would like to see one, you know, roughly in the middle. Yeah, uh, uh, that uh, was the best because there's even a drive right now. It's just the, the way the road has dropped from the old cemetery, it's probably 30 inches where you'd have to go like straight up. And so we might have to put in stone stairs, might have to do something. But Less why can't you do a, like a big gate with a walk door in it? I put you a gate on that side towards my mother's side and put a walk through gate where the, where the go marker is. But I just don't want everybody, I don't if care. my parents ain't there, I don't want, you want to go look at it. You better walk all through our door, door yard and in. I agree with that. Somebody's private property. Property. I agree with each review. You know, I'll, I'll go check it out tomorrow. Rose, Rose, they're amazing. They'll take care of it for sure. And it looks phenomenal. I'm really happy with that. Thank yeah. you for telling us about that. There should be some public access for sure. Um, so I would at this point entertain a motion to approve the cemetery deed prepared by Duncan with a change of allowing four remains for a lot. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? Is this just for Grove Cemetery? And just for the White Hill plot, because yeah, as, yeah. as it's indicated in here, that cemetery has it's basically closed. been closed to burials. So this makes it clear that you guys can. And if I understood your email earlier, from what Evan had said, anything on paper that was written prior to today doesn't exist. Yeah, this, this would supersede any other it's agreement. Like should they years from be now found? To go, what should they be found? Say, yeah, the, Gary, Gary told me Saturday that his mother had a paper somewhere that talked about it, but she doesn't think he doesn't think she could find it. So there's a likelihood that. One exists, but it this, may never be found. So this, this supersedes that. This supersedes yes. that. Because it's an official select board action. The paper that she found was probably something written Red by Hoover Red Hoover. Wrote on a back of a notebook. Might, might be. Yeah, it might, might be. be. In no, the, I think it's more on a whittle stick. The, va the value <laughs> of this is it's recorded. It's yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's 50 years from now. People occupying our seats won't have to deal with this, and you know, know. your ancestors we'll won't know. won't have to deal with it either. Yep. Or your, okay, your survivors. All yeah. right, are we content? Yeah, I'm content. All, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, and the ayes have it. And thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, folks, for being understanding and patient. Just let me know what you figure out when you go up and look at it. It's, 
Yeah, I would be interested because even if we I have it, pictures of it. Well, I'm, Tom said he's going to go look at it. Right. I would be supportive of spending some money to get access. Yeah. Because public access in the world it, it makes sense. To me. Well, if you drive you. up there, you'll see the conundrum. And there's no great solution. And they just needed to get the fence done that day while they had rented the book. Okay. There's not even a place other than parking in the road. If you want to go there, at Duncan you have to pretty much park in the road. Yeah. To get to your cars at an angle like yes. that. <laughs> How do people get into Moe and stuff? Gary, Gary does it right there. Yeah, right. You do all yeah. 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 So they need I think I'll bring my dog next time. Good. Thank you. My big dog. We can have a run around. Two of them. I think I'll bring them. Yeah. 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 If there is one. Well, okay. Well, he, so just to be clear on our end, I think we've already authorized the town administrator to execute these deeds. So uh, I believe that was part of Mike's motion. Yeah. So I think if you can just make the change to that document yeah, and, yeah. and issue it, you can you can write on and, and we'll attach this to the also Gary said that he would like a copy of whatever gets done. So if you could mail them to him too. Absolutely. That would be good. I think I'll email it out to the I, if we email you a copy, would you be able to get yeah, perfect? Thank you. Okay. Any discussion on old business? Uh, I had something on their old business. Um, oh, uh, the TSSA, the town sewer service area. I have reached out to um, Alec Jones, who's the Lamont County Planning Commission mapper. <clears throat> he is going to try and get us a revised map. Uh, I was talking with Mike earlier. I think there's one other section of that town sewer service area that probably should be modified. The original ordinance <clears throat> included an allocation formula, and that was based on the initial allocation of 25,000 gallons of capacity to the two service areas. Bottom line is nobody's really maintained accurate information on the actual allocations that have been out there. And there's a really, yeah, really. And there's a formula set up whereby you only issue so many gallons per year. I would advocate just getting rid of that because, as a practical matter, we have not had any issues. Um, meeting that threshold um, and the village has certainly indicated that they want the customers so i don't think you know I, I, what i would suggest is once we reach the twenty five thousand gallons it's kind of on the village to decide whether or not they want to uh, you know issue new capacity on their sewer system mm -hmm. um, and leave it up to them that makes sense It's a little bit startling that there, there isn't accurate information on. Well, well I, there was. What else do we have? Um, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's been maintained. It's something can I talk that, about cash flow real quick? As a landowner. You can. Can we, can we um, get through the... So you, you get the inter, interlocal kennel. Um, have you heard anything additionally from Crystal? I think we should maybe talk about that. I don't think that that's going to be a piece. I still want to talk to you about a boat website. Insurance is, yeah. yeah. I think it's, we, might, it might be complicated and it might take more time than we have. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks. Other things um, before, because you talked about the interlocal kennel. Um, Duncan and I had talked briefly after our joint meeting because joint properties is on there. I think before we applied to board members to work with two people from the village, two village members to dig into a lot of the details, I guess, on separation of property. Duncan and I kind of thought it would be a good idea to maybe put an article in the town warning as advisory to kind of get some sense of the voters before we spent a lot of time on it. 
Is the board kind of okay with that concept? Put, putting it where? As an advisory article on the town warning. So for town meeting day, you know, uh, people mean, could say, no, we're not going to be supportive of it. it. It at least gets buy in if there's interest yeah. from the voters because it's their property. And we may come up with a plan and put it out in front of the voters and they still say no, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. But I think before we spend a lot of time, energy and sweat on it, it would behoove us to get a, a temperature check, I guess, from the voters, whether. In all fairness, it's only five months away. Yeah, that's right. That's, and that was my concern, right? I brought it up at the meeting. No matter what we do, the voters are gonna weigh in. Mm -hmm. Seems to me that um, so it sounds like you'd be supportive. Of the I concept. would be very supportive of the, the concept. Not, not hearing objections. Well, oh, certainly not. not. There's no, no sense. So it's going so. to a lot of work. I mean, people don't know. Okay. Okay. If you get a two to one in favor, then the voters voted down it. It's some time it right, it's turned yeah. it down. They want to keep it. So that will stay on there. Uh, mm -hmm. Town website. I guess we can take off. I you already got it. Next. Yeah. Is it yeah, if I could, Evan, if I could just talk about the, just to be clear, you're talking about the properties, right? That are jointly owned. Yeah. Town and village. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hear what Duncan's saying, but I know when you approach the voters on something that's so historical, right? It's many boards, many residents have gone through this experience of having, finding out that it was unshared. 50 50 or not that's theirs that's ours and all this other stuff which it does it permeates all the work that's what i found out when we started doing the flood work last last year mm -hmm. who's going to do what who's the lead who hires who whose property how do you split the shares and it's a because of all that it, it might be it might be better to have a uh, more clear questions. I, you know, just going to the voters saying, "What do you think about splitting properties?" You know, immediately they're going to start to say, "Well, what about this? What, what do you mean exactly? How's how can it work? Other? Why should we spend time to get into the weeds? What's the concept?" Yeah. So that, I mean, it, you know, there's suggestions. There's plenty of towns that do this. You know, Hyde Park and the village did that for years, where the town owned the lease. There was a lease back to the village for the shared portion. So it's not unusual. It's, it gets really, it gets more complicated when you have split ownership than it does when you have lease back arrangements and terms, conditions, market rates, all the normal things that commercial people do when they have a ownership and a tenant. So I, I was just, I, I'm thinking about that question, depending on how it's asked, may not give you an answer at all. And, and why do that exercise too, you know? So. It also might excite, I think just, you know, today with the White Hills, they started asking questions about how to how to rearrange lots and how to rearrange, you know, and just, just if we don't have a clear plan, let's say do you want this idea or not, it might invoke a lot of weeds and questions and then prevent that solution too. We could also just narrow it down to yeah, yeah. 184 acres. Correct, correct. Yeah, you want very to... specific, something's, yeah, yeah maybe both right. boards have a rough agreement Agreement on doesn't without the numbers, without the values, and all those things. We have the village trustees concur with your question, you know, so you go at it with a joint effort, even though you may only be asking. You may never get there, I don't know, but you might know. not. <laughs> <laughs> I but I mean, the first thing that's one is like village garage, town garage, you know, is that amenable to that? That's so black and white, right? Mm -hmm. or, the, or the middle house subdividing that as a third property, you know, it's clean and it's defined. 180 acres with the storage shed and the staging area, I think is going to get hard to just, that's the hardest one. And the municipal building is probably the most emotional one. That, so, but I think the start with the garages and the mill house, those are clean, black and white, and logical, right? And then you can maybe work from there, I guess. Yeah. Well, I have to think when we come up with the article. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, Ron, I wouldn't suggest for a minute just throwing out an advisory article with no information. Yeah, should we sell? Well, we have to list okay, all the properties okay. and the shares. Yeah, you're gonna have to have this. You're gonna have to have your statutory article to transfer property if you get there. 
So you have this advisory thing, which is what Duncan was saying. Hey, what do you think? We have to have this big question about cleaning up the books, or you take your incremental. We're going to take this long haul. We're going to take one property at a time and give you the chance to decide to give it up. The well, on the complication, as uh, you know, we can come up with the greatest plan since sliced bread. Um, and the village trustees may say, oh, that's a stupid idea, or the village well, voters a, yeah, might say that's a stupid idea. Oh, yeah. No, but from a management governance perspective, you should pick that up. It's just <laughs> one way or the other, whether they want to go with it or not. You know, the board, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those holdovers from good good ideas that sometimes better split Well, we're so. trying to work, do a backhoe anyways. Uh, to buy them out of their 20%, 20 here, 20 they make that real money yeah. <laughs> well if you start buying tires uh, all right Tom. salt bids uh, uh, so I, I, I threw them in the back okay um, those are in the back of the back what do you recommend can I, before we leave old business can i just touch bases on one thing again yeah um I I mentioned our asked Tom to put gravel pit on there, and I think that's something. Obviously, we're not going to talk about it now, but we, we need to put that in our long term uh, work session. Um, yeah. Ideas about what are we going to do about a gravel pit? Probably the village own part of it. No, oh, we don't. We own it. One more we own it ourselves. Of extraction. Yeah, and. It, um, that's going to be quickly filled up with materials and meadows. And Ooh. so I think that that solution needs to be solved by next fall, where we either have property ready to transfer. Uh, we have an, maybe an agreeable <coughs> owner, the same person we bought the land from initially. We might be able to continue the same uh, deals, if you will. Um, and test bits have already been dug. It's just is this cost effective or not? That decision has to come. It needs to it needs to be in place and by next September to get from that. I think thinking that we would sell. I think it would be the an expansion bit? of the existing, just like purchasing the next set, couple acres over. Um, we talked about this it, you know, a the, month ago, two months ago. I think the board was interested in getting something lined up or having numbers. I have a file started on this. Yeah, we don't need to waste a lot of time on it tonight, but no. it just I just want to highlight it as an item that is one of those things that we need to deal with. Yeah, it's a one year out, must be to have a firm decision. And the ramifications are buying entirely at $14 a yard when we buy. Yeah, however many thousands of yards versus right now we're purchasing at eight dollars a yard when we call it ourselves. So it's, it's, it's that labor work. The six and maybe you know maybe Hyde Park would want to win. No, I, 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 I just don't get a little appreciate this. If I, if anybody that's been around longer than twenty years, uh, going into rivers and taking gravel up. It was a big issue, you know, kind of a common practice in the 50s and 60s and the 70s, and the state shut everybody down because it had negative consequences and all that other stuff. The new money that's coming, this has a mitigation money where you have floodplain restoration and benching, like Holmes Meadow, well, as you can get through the archaeology. It's not that, you know, you can get rid of the archaeology that is sort of the, the reclamation of gravel. You know, if you get a really large floodplain restoration project, we, we were down there. You're gonna have, you're gonna have to have a use for that removed material. So we were there at the pit taking samples to yeah. bring up to Percy's to see if we could instead of putting it in our gravel pit, we're on the on home setup. It's probably good. We stole samples because it really is just sand. <coughs> well, after you get through the the sand, and I think we're only going down five feet, and we dug six. So I don't think we're hitting projects. Two projects were projects two should be down. fifteen or twenty feet benching. That's right. Yeah, so you ate the material up to your pit and buy a second pit or third pit. That should be what this current select board's doing. It's going to be a hot commodity, very hard to pay for that. If you don't buy your land right now that has it, go we'll get a rock pit somewhere to put just rock, just because the rock is going to become a bigger issue. So, I gotta go. End up early.
Thank you. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Have a wise words. Yeah. You can buy it now. Buy it. Is there other land available that's just as attainable? We're moving on to the stock contract now. It's not in my place. It's all available. Who is that? That is Ron Rajinsky. He used to be the town administrator for that Malachite Park. Uh -huh. And we contracted him to handle the FEMA reimbursement paperwork uh -huh. and everything for the 2023 flood. So he's, uh, he was administrator for 30 years and now he does municipal consulting. So he does like a capital plan for Berlin. He worked with Westford for their sewage treatment center. So he does all the municipal work all statewide. Do you live locally? Uh, he lived in Florida. Oregon. Now he's down in Florida. I don't know where he stays now. Did you invite him tonight? No, he just sent me a text message. He's like, you guys are going late. I'm still driving. Is that right? I'd love to see it. All right. Salt bids. Salt. Big contract. So that's the one hiccup because I haven't, I need the state to maybe push Compass. Compass said no, they no longer sell to towns, the state contract. Um, but the Compass contract with the state does say districts and towns in these districts are defined by attachment D, and there's no attachment D that came from the state's contract. So I need to I need to get a hold of the state, and uh, they did not answer the phone today. But um, you need confirmation to either A, um, will the state enforce that contract on our behalf, or um, are we on our own? Uh, it's my understanding. I've never had this happen in my whole 10 years. Every time you wanted to use a state contract, you could always use a state contract. There's never a hiccup. This is the first, first thing. Uh, so, so we can use District 8, so 7942. Pretty good price. That would save us eight thousand dollars a year. It's significant. Yeah, it's twelve dollars a ton. Twelve dollars right. two cents. Yeah. So that's how we have to. That's where we're going. To do. I mean, the recommendation would be to Jason likes Compass and he's been using Compass for two two years now. He would like to stick with Compass over Cargill, and so the recommendation would be a motion to go with. Compass, um, whether it's with the state contract, that's the first option. But if the state can't help us, we still need salt this year and, and move forward with Compass at the town price. Well, Compass is five bucks a, a ton more than cargo. It is. And last year they were more expensive. I, last year, I believe they were $100 a ton. Cargo or Compass? Compass. And we went with Compass last year. Because of the quality, I think right. you know, I, somebody had talked with Mark, who is a salt lover, mm -hmm. um, and he said that the compass salt was more salt, or the Cargill salt had something Earth. mixed in it, impurities, short. That's the word. Uh, huh? that's, that's the word that was thrown around last week. Um, so he's last year said for the quality of the compass salt you saved in needing to spread less of it. And we went with more expensive salt last year. We're all in this together. I don't see what the bigger rub is if we can't get the state contract. I don't either. I mean, we, if we really want to push for clarity, we could delay two weeks. I think making a motion to kind of allow Tom some latitude would, would be better. I mean, you can let me go after the state contract and sign. That would be option one. Option two is the board decision whether you want to go with Cargo or Compass, and I'll push that if I if I get firm. And of course, you'll see that firm now before I move forward with any of them. Yeah. So, what would the board like to do? So like firm it up. <laughs> when it says product pricing, districts and towns within each district are defined by. 
Appendix D. Attachment D. But she didn't send me that. There is no D. Yeah. And when you go online, you can look at some of these contracts. You gotta have somebody that's a purchasing agent for the whole county. For a whole million Vermont. You should have had the whole state of Vermont. This one person does all for the entire state. So she, each region, it's all based on the distance from where the salt comes from. That's why each district has a different price. But yes, but that is for the state. Yeah. And Mark and I are kind of having a sidebar here about municipalities getting together and buying in bulk. You know, that's really the thing. purpose. That's why our tax dollars pay the Office of Purchasing and Contracting is for this ability. This is why I'm, my mind is blown that we can't use the state contract. You know, this is all state dollars. We we'll call up our reps or whatever our new reps are tomorrow and say this is a this is a problem it's eight thousand dollar phone call it's, it is a problem yeah, yeah it's an eight thousand dollar phone call yeah. so might we be looking for a motion Westman. to empower tom to pursue the state option failing that come back to the board no they don't want to do that they want to give them the autonomy to take care of it if uh, he doesn't make the deal and go with another company. And the board would have to make a decision tonight. What is the second choice? Uh -huh. Step one is the state contract. I'll send out a firm yes or no. And then moving forward, what two. would your preferred option be? Cargill or Compass? Compass is 9220 a ton delivered. Cargill is 91.75, or Compass is 96.20, and Cargill is 91.75, Philibert. And Compass is a better product. But That's who we purchased salt from for the past two years, and who Jason is recommending, and I can only guess that his reason for recommending it this year is the same as last year. Uh -huh. Which is? The more right. expensive one. <laughs> but it's yeah. higher quality. So uh -huh. if it's higher quality, you, you make it up with the, with the quality versus the price. It's $1,800 difference between the two over the course of the year. No, he still stayed within budget last year. Well, yeah, he, we asked for four to 500, and we only used about 400 yard, four hundred, so we have it back. And we buy it in the spring, so we fill ourselves so it for the next year. And this, and if our price was higher last year, we budgeted for four for four hundred, and then uh, we're going to save. You know, we budgeted four hundred at a higher price. Yeah. Right? Uh, so basically, our salt shed is full right now. It's full right now. We're buying for next. We lost twenty grand worth of salt. We thought we lost twenty grand worth of salt in the flood because we fill it in the spring, so you have it the next winter. Right. But the warm winter last year worked out. Yeah, so we're not, we didn't use as much as we needed. But so we still lost 20 grand worth of salt that melted and went down the river. Yeah, I think we ended up taking a five thousand dollar payout because we couldn't prove the volume of salt on. We could prove the best we could. Right. And that's, that's what we so we, bud we budgeted thirty eight thousand dollars for salt. FEMA wouldn't accept any number because we couldn't prove a physical amount. Right. I and, understand. Uh, insurance company took five grand. So this is a, is this a killing affair that we have to do this within two weeks? Uh, I would say that it's we need salt. If you don't, this is when these contracts they should have been this should have been done in September. And if we don't get this reserve now, come spring when we buy, they won't have it in their stockpiles. So this is what we're doing. And in the RFP, you'll see this specific question of what amount is reserved. And so what we're doing is we're ensuring that 400 tons. Yeah, yeah I know what, what we're up to, but why don't we take care of this in September? That's a good question. Um, I came across my desk, I forwarded it to Jason, and this is one of those questions about the horse historical process versus the RFP process. And so Jason said, yeah, I go with Compass. And I said, okay, what do we do? I forwarded it to him and then it sat vacant. And then I said, hey, what are we going to do? It's wintertime, we have a salt contract. And then we talked, and I said, Oh, we got to put it out the bid. And that's when I wrote the RFP and emailed you guys. I know that I slipped through the crack, but I, I, I don't like doing business that way, to tell you the truth. Well, then we'll wait two more weeks. It makes sense. 
gives you time to firm up the state contract. That's what I would do. What about the rest of the board? A motion to, did you do make a motion? I didn't make the motion. I think he was a for clarity. I was yeah, any motion. Just give me a couple of weeks to bring it back next time. And we have a couple of weeks. We're not losing out. I think <clears throat> you check those numbers that came back. Make sure it says. Other, otherwise, we empower you to pursue yeah, the state. price effective through April 30th, 25 for Compass. Or Cargill. April 30th. Uh, so I'm going to return this quote to our attention within 10 business days of this letter. We cannot update your account for this year without a sign. Blah, 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 blah. So this is due to not So it was sent on the 27th. When's it due? It would be middle of this week. I doubt they're, they're going to have a huge problem. Yeah, they gave me this back with an hour's basket. When I did the direct, I reached out to um, these guys, American and American Rock Top was the other one. They had to go back. Hmm. I think it was too far away. Is yeah. some of it coming yeah. from upstate New York? I think Compass is from Canada. Which is why it's good. State, I think that's why the state has their contract in Morrisville because it's probably their closest. It's probably cheaper than Cargo because Cargo comes from New Hampshire. Well, some of their correspondence with in France. So. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I'd say the group can. So do we have a clear direction of what we're doing? I'm asking the board. Mike has said he wants to wait two weeks, and that's fine. But what do you want to do? I would want to empower Tom to uh, move forward with the state, which he's going to do no matter what, whether we do two weeks or not. I don't. I guess I'm with Mike. Two weeks, we'll have more clarity. Duncan. I'm fine with waiting. Um, if the state says yes, can I move forward with that? I guess yes. That yeah, I think that would be a, a right. that would be a no brainer. I think so. Yeah. At tonight's meeting, I would entertain a motion from the board to sign a contract for purchasing salt in the amount of seventy nine forty two a ton. Second. As per yes, yeah, per the state contract. Oh, you you made the motion on on <clears throat> As per the state contract. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you make the motion, Mark? No, you did. Okay, fine. I made the motion. I seconded. All right, Mike seconded. All those in favor? Is there any further aye. discussion? Okay. Aye. All those against? The ayes have it. So at least you if can. we can push that and yeah. then. What I'll do is I'll also get Cargill to update. I don't think if the state says, I'm sorry, we're out of luck, I'll get Car Cargill to update the quote yeah. to last till November 18th. Call Westman up. Yeah. We you know we use Cargill for years and years and years and never had any issue with it. Uh, Compass may be a better product, but I guess I'm wondering it, is does one react any better to the cal the liquid calcium? You know, we buy our calcium from high park. We get our calcium, we go up there, they have a brine machine. And we get it from them and bring it back. So uh, I think this this is really uh, only for certain areas. It's not that much that we use. We really like to go to Brian. And actually, one thing we should look to in the future for budgeting is going entirely to Brian. There's like great results, and it's like 25%. It's a lot cheaper because we're using far less salt. Just resting people's cars out there. So. Yeah, but no, it's not. They claim, they claim it doesn't. <laughs> well, I mean, every mechanic says it's, it's straight salt water that we're using there's no additives that when you put additives and adhesives to it yes it does but what we're using in the town is literally no different than snow go spread some salt on it let it melt the snow and drive on it so when you throw down rock salt you throw it down the middle of the road and then through four hours later you're driving through with the plow and pushing it on your bank or when you use brine you put it on the road and stay on the road yeah, literally the water just made it sticky, so it didn't shatter. You're talking about the stuff that the state did a few years ago and threw away. Yeah, which I was mechanics are complaining about. Yeah. I think they'd love it, secretly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you new car dealers like it. 
<laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Okay, at least we got some headway on that. But next item is executive session. I don't think we're gonna have a motion coming out of it, Donna. This is a really early night. Yeah, this is great. I might be home by. You want to talk about cash flow at all? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you did ask to talk about cash flow. My uh, apologies. Um, okay. So we have a very big, very tight organization. And five major projects that are going to happen in the next year. One is Lenway Lane Armoring Net Riverbank. That's five hundred eighty-five thousand dollars reimbursed money. Then we have VC Stormwater. That's already been awarded the contract. That's another five hundred sixty-five thousand. Five hundred for that. Oh, shit. so that's reimbursement as well. There's twenty thousand outstanding of town money that goes to that project. So. And these are reimbursable in increments, but we need some really, we need to make sure the, the small dollars is the engineering, the big dollars is going to be four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars at a time for those large, the, uh, the excavation companies to come back to do the work. So we need the time doing Lenway Lane, paying it out, getting reimbursed before the construction starts for, say, the stormwater, before the library gets moved before Holmes Meadow gets excavated, before the industrial park goes in. And it doesn't matter what the order is, and that's all gonna evolve and change based on contracts and timeline. And so we need to be very clean with vendors ahead of time, letting them know when payment is to be expected, that there's going to be a delay because we're waiting for reimbursement to then expend. And there's also gonna to have to be very clean timelines with the treasure with Rosemary. This is a hell of a year to be here last year. Because it's going to be a lot of money moving, it's all. Um, but we should probably take out the maximum amount for a tax anticipation note in the form of a line of credit. This is something that I know that I've done in the past. You don't spend it if you don't use it, so there's zero interest unless you use it. And there's a time when we might have a start of one project, overlap the finish of the other, where we, we need to float that project to get to reimbursement comes. So if we have to borrow $100,000, we might pay interest for two weeks, but we pay it right off and then you can reborrow and pay it off. And it allows us to finish these five big projects next summer. And the industrial park might go into 26, but I think we should keep pushing for 25 for that reason. But if, but there's at least four big projects and we're talking 500,000, 500,000, Holmes Meadow 750,000, in the library 1.7 million. So there's gonna be big dollar amounts spent that's all reimbursed. Those four projects take zero or zero town match. But the only match comes from industrial park, but we have that match set aside another way, other means. Did, uh, I was kind of hoping Rosemary could have been here tonight because uh, I did see that in your report and I, we talked about it for months. Take it out of revolving though. Because we talked about that a couple months ago. You know, there's 300 and some odd thousand. It's not the revolving loan fund, but it's the tax and okay. station reserve. Yeah. And at the time, so I, I, I'm not opposed to the idea, I guess. I would just was hoping to get her thoughts. Yeah. And so, encourage tax and station reserve fund. I at that time she had indicated that it could be used. Yeah, and, so these, and maybe that has changed. I don't know. When we, when, the next time she comes, there's going to be our reserve fund and there's going to be the physical balance in the general ledger. And how the government operates is we operate in the arrears. So, all, so on, until that first quarterly tax bill, you're actually working in debt and then you get reimbursed. Then you work in debt and then you get reimbursed. You work in debt and you get reimbursed problem and so those tax anticipation reserve fund and all the other reserves that we have we kind of borrow against ourselves sort of speak because it's more it's fund accounting so we're our general ledger balance is different than our actual general fund so we kind of borrow against ourselves and then get reimbursed with taxes borrow ourselves get reimbursed there's a chance that we're going to have to borrow more you spend more money than we're able to borrow against ourselves so those reverse we're not going to take any money out of those reserve funds if we use a tax anticipation note but there will be an expense to the taxpayers and the amount of interest 
And then at the end of the year, the recommendation I would make is use the tax anticipation reserve fund to offset that interest of the previous year from that tax anticipation note. What's the interest rate? rate? As it, Rosemary would have to put it up to bid. She'd probably go to all the local banks and a couple big ones. The last one I did was 2.85%. It's it's usually lower than general lending, so probably four and a half, four would be probably my guess right now. Just to have a line of credit. So you just, but you don't pay anything unless I you use it. Yeah. 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 Why is there any pay more? I'd lend you the money. <laughs> when we had that discussion before, did we authorize Rosemary to execute a line of credit if she felt it was necessary or? I don't think it was a formal motion. I think it was discussed as this, we have a convergence. We're just getting really close to that convergence. And there might even be a change. We might even, a meeting with this week with the USDA NRCS and Mumbley to tie off that project on Mumbley Land. And we might even try to get, there's a window right now, warm weather with the construction season and we might even do it now. So then there's 500,000 that we've already paid and got back. And so that's one project out of the way. But then as soon as ground is thawed, we're moving to library and I'm sure stormwater is MSI in the contract. So th things are moving very quickly. Yeah. We just have to like make sure that Rosemary's on board and we need to make sure that you guys are on board. You're going to have to sign off on it. Are there any uh, other reserve funds that we could try to change the yeah, I verbiage know. on at town meeting day? The big one is the tax anticipation reserve. I mean, that's large, but and, and I would a not paving reserve fund is probably going to have 200,000 in it. I would use it to offset any interest accrued from the line of credit. But the line of credit allows that flexibility for projects to move through. If you use a reserve fund like that and say there's 300,000 in it, and we get a $400,000 bill, and we don't have the money in the, in the checkbook to pay until we, then we have to wait until we get taxed in again. I understand. Yeah. Uh, so my, my outlandish concepts and questions are strictly yeah. to reduce the amount of interest that we Absolutely. will pay, period. That That's the only well short-term interest is going to be kind of new school i i think we could flow 400 from what i saw it looks like we can flow four 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 hundred fifty thousand on our own just based on our own reserves the problem is when these bills get bigger than that what do we do and then there's a certain a certain amount of that we can just flush out by the nature of bills there's usually a lot bigger bills in the fall when we have Bigger, bigger expenses that happen generally in the fall. So in the summer, we can float things as long as we get reimbursed before that time. But if we don't, there's going to be that little flop. We need some safety net. Yeah. And know that you're going to need probably 30 to 60 days to put that line of credit together. I, I'm not asking you to do anything tonight, but just have it in the, yeah, have it in there needs to be a plan. There should be a plan, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it'd be nice to hear from those too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I am more than happy to make a motion, not tonight, but at some time to authorize the treasurer to take out yeah. uh, a, a line of credit, you know, to cover these things. She, it's not unfamiliar to Rosemary. She did it with the village yes. on large projects. Yeah, the before. town has never done so, a line of credit, but she did just with it two years ago. She did it for the village. What? I don't know about I don't know about two years ago. She definitely did when we did the water project. Um, that was yeah. a big deal. The Main Street project was a big deal. Yeah. Um, so, and I I think the board authorized her to do it. I don't think we actually had to use the line of credit. Right. Yeah. yeah. But we had the authorization out there I would to do it, which is I think the key thing is to authorize her to do it because it, if if we do, I believe she has to get a a signature from us yeah. from you know and to the bank authorizing it to take place yeah i so, would do it every year and reach into the maximum amount and honestly i never used it once but it was there just in case and there were times when the bank account read down to twenty thousand. but you if you don't have to use it you shouldn't but it's there if you need it it's really good yeah okay. All right. So keep it on a future agenda as an action item. 
it seems like the cross went off. We ought to have. <laughs> we ought to have a line of credit. Yeah, this, going to this many big number of projects. There's going to be yeah. There's going to be some big big outgoes. Yeah. Or we could just not pay anybody for a couple months. Well, your contractors tend to. No, I meant our employees. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I should have brought that up last week. <laughs> All right. Barring anything else, I would be in a motion to enter executive session. <laughs> I'm entertaining it. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. You got to move the Enter executive session. You have to say that. Yeah, just read the. Oh, 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 right, right oh, there. Right. Right. Somebody else do it. No, right. All right. Uh, one BSA 313A3. Second. That's it. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Blake Tom will be in.